Let's study the science of field goal kicking using SOLIDWORKS Motion Simulation. First thing we'll do is enable the SOLIDWORKS Motion add-in. Motion is what allows us to take a time study and actually apply loads and constraints and get engineering data off of it, such as displacements. Inside this new motion study we create, we'll set a couple things up. First thing we'll do is turn it to a motion analysis so we can take advantage of all the full range of realistic physics that this solver has. We'll set up some contacts. The contact sets we need to be between first the ball and the ground. And we'll just go ahead and accept the default since that's really going to be a very insignificant contact. And then we're going to set up the contact between the actual foot and the ball itself. Now this is where the stiffness of the foot and the ball is going to be important. There's some predefined materials. We'll choose aluminum and dry rubber, assuming it's not snowing during the Super Bowl. And that should give us a good starting point, but we can adjust that later if that doesn't give us good results. The football is currently held in place by some mates. We want to, just after zero seconds, suppress those mates. So we move the timeline to zero seconds and suppress. And what that does is it just kind of pretends like the holder is holding it and then lets go right before the kick. I do want to make sure to zoom in and turn these off very close to right after the thing starts. You can kind of think of that initial period as simply a reset point to help get everything ready to go for each run that you may do. The total time that we want to run this at is about two seconds. That'll give us all of the range of the kick without having a whole bunch of extra time that we have to calculate. I'll turn on gravity, make sure it's turned in the right direction. And then I want to turn on a motor. For this, we'll apply the motor to the leg up there by the hip. And I did some quick back of the envelope calculations and came up with 360 RPM in order to get uh, a foot speed that's equivalent to what an NFL kicker could accomplish. The contact is going to take place in a very short amount of time, so we need to make sure we have enough frames per second to capture the information and calculate the contact. So we'll increase the study property's frame rate to 1,000 frames per second. I'll hit calculate and we'll let it rip. And it looks like we're getting a perfect field goal on the first try. So everything's looking good so far. Watching the animation, a couple things come to mind. First, every time you interact with the timeline, it's going to reapply the view orientation from the motion study. So you can disable playback of view keys. This is a great way to allow you flexibility to maneuver your view in any way you want and still be able to calculate the and play the motion study quickly and easily. Another thing that I noticed during the playback is that the kicker was out there sprawling around in a circle. He's going to get injured doing that. So right after he makes contact, I'm going to take and place a key. Just right click in the timeline to place a key because I don't want to maintain that 360 RPM all the way through the follow through. Then I'll move over and set another key where I ramp down to zero RPM and then I'll set a key to simply turn the motor off. That'll allow the kicker to bring his foot down to the ground. I'll add one more visual aid. I want to create a plot of exactly where the ball is going. So we'll go into the result plots. We'll do a displacement plot. This is where you can get engineering data, but in this case I just want the trace path of the point in the middle of the football. Notice it shows the vector out in the graphics area. So it's kind of like those augmented views when you're watching the sportscast. Let's recalculate and see how close we are. That looks a lot better. The field goal's still going through. The kicker's not exerting himself too much. And the camera doesn't reset itself every time I interact with the timeline. So it makes it easy when you're setting up the study. Now let's try some what-if scenarios. I'm going to change the angle of the foot. I've got an angle mate for the foot from 180 degrees to 185 to see whether or not they still can make a field goal at that angle. Looks like you can. That looks really good. But I'm constantly kind of fighting with my view here. This is another thing that you see a lot with motion studies. So I'm going to build a camera. The camera can be set to always follow a target. So we'll select the point at the middle of the football and it'll automatically track that as it goes. We have our own little cameraman going on. I'll manually adjust the placement of the camera to be in the stands or approximately in the stands. If I knew exactly where it was, I could actually click the location where the camera is going to be stationed and that'll give me a realistic representation of what we would see out in the field. With my camera created, I need to make sure that I go back and apply it to my motion study. 
So you have to choose which camera is enabled at any given moment. So I right click and say camera three, and let's calculate and make sure it looks good. Everything's looking great. All right, let's run a couple more iterations. Let's try 187, maybe 188 degrees. And at this point, we're getting really close to the upright on that field goal. So this is where we'll kind of start to iterate on our setup. And I'm going to actually add another contact set between the football and the upright. This is probably a good time to take a step back and talk about the frame rate, the contact accuracy, and the amount of time it takes to solve these motion studies. You've got control over a lot of parameters. If your motion study frame rate is too low, you may miss something completely. In other words, you may see something pass through another object simply because it didn't have the time step, didn't notice that there was contact. In this case, the time step looks to be sufficient, but the solid body contact is not accurately calculating the contact, and it looks like the ball is actually going through the upright. A couple ways you can address this. One way would be to increase the contact resolution, but that's generally a recipe for very, very slow performance as it tries to more accurately calculate the shape of the object. Instead, I recommend creating a very simplified body. In this case, I'll just do a cylindrical upright, and you can actually put it in the model and then hide it in the motion study, and you'll still get realistic interactions with that model geometry but you're coming from an extremely simplified model. So if you're having contact issues where the parts move past each other or they don't interact realistically, simplify them to their most basic essence and that'll help you to get a more accurate interaction. So eight degrees off is no good. So what we can do is set this tolerance to plus or minus seven degrees for a 30 yard kick. Now this is how you would use an engineering tool such as SolidWorks Motion to do one of a couple things. You might be looking to set process requirements. In this case, you could say, I need the process to be within seven degrees uh, consistently in order to achieve a good field goal. Or somebody might ask you what the reliable output is gonna be knowing that you have a plus or minus seven degree capable machine. And so you can run the analysis and actually take a look at the limits and understand the output of your system given at realistic tolerances. Let us know in the comments if you have other questions about SOLIDWORKS or motion simulation.